Welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at the Gaussian model, logistic growth models, and look and introduce a logarithmic model. As we saw previously, the Gaussian model is essentially our bell-shaped curve. It's used frequently in probability and statistics to represent populations that are normally distributed. So that normal distribution curve. So here's a sample problem in which we're evaluating the SAT mathematics scores. And our function y equals 0 0.0034e raised to the negative x minus 514 squared, all divided by 27,848 for x's between 200 and 800. The x's here are our mathematics scores on the SAT. So we want to graph the function using our graphing calculator and find the maximum value. Well, fortunately, the hard part of this is the window of our curve. So the x's are pretty easy. The x values are going to be our SAT scores, which range from 200 to 800. But I'm going to steal the distribution from the book here with the y values. So switching to our graphing calculator, I input my function into the graphing calculator and go ahead and set my window. So I set my x min for to 0, my maximum of 1,000, and I count by 100s. And then my y min is 0, y, my y max is 0 0.004, and my scale is 0 0.001. And you can see here I get a really nice graph of that normal distribution curve. So then we just want to find the maximum. So we go to our calc function and four is the maximum. And we are looking for our left and right bounds here. So our left bound, we want to make sure we're to the left of the maximum. And we'll trace over to the right bound, hit enter, and make a guess, and we will graph. So we find out that our maximum is indeed about 507. Some populations initially have a very rapid growth, followed by a declining rate of growth. This might be something that we had hoped we'd see with the COVID-19, where it grew rapidly, but then we were hoping it was going to, to level off. So that is called a sigmoidal, sigmoidal curve. And they've got the standard uh, function listed down here, where y is the population and size, and x is our time. So we have a logistics curve sample here, which talks about the spread of a virus on a college campus. We've got a college campus of 5,000 students, and one student returns from vacation with a contagious flu virus. And the spread is modeled by this particular function. Our 5,000 would be our total campus, and then our function listed below, where Y is the total number of students infected after T days. Now, the college will cancel classes when 40% or more of the students are infected. So how many students are infected after five days? Well, since T is our five, we substitute five in for T, and we can just put this right into our graphing calculator and calculate the value, and we get 54. Now, classes are canceled when 40% of the student body is impacted by this. So we take 40% of 5,000 and calculate that, and we realize that's 2,000 students. So now we've got our y value, and we have to back into after about how many days do we think we're going to, um, to reach that level of 2,000 students. So the work here is on the left-hand side of how that was done. Looks like we multiplied both sides by the denominator here on the right to get that out of the denominator. That's how we get 1 plus 4,999e raised to the negative 
t equals 2.5. The 2.5 came from, they divided both sides by 2,000. So this, this 2.5 here really came from 5,000 divided by 2,000. So that was 5 halves or 2.5. They subtracted 1 from both sides, so that's how we got 1.5. And they divided by 4,999. So 1.5 divided by 4,099 equals e to the negative 0.08t. Natural log both sides, solve for t, and we get t equals 10.14. So it'll take about 10 days before we infect 2,000 students. Now there's another way to do this. You can do this on your graphing calculator. So using our calculator, we can put our function into our graphing calculator, but we also want to know when there's going to be 2,000 students infected. So that actually will be our second function. So I've put those functions in y2 and y3, so 5,000 divided by 1 plus 4,999 e to the negative 0.8x, and y equals 2,000. And I've set my window. My x values range from 0 to 20. That's my days. So I'll put a scale of 2 there every two days. And my y min, my infected students, will be 0 to 5,000. And I'll do a scale of every 500 students there. Then I'll go ahead and then graph my function. So the graph of my growth of the virus is in red, and then my y equals 2,000 is a horizontal line. And you can see here when the infections gets to 2,000 is where my horizontal line meets my curve. So to find out what that intersection point is, we can go to our second calc, and we want to find the intersection, hit 5. And the first curve looks like the red curve is highlighted, so hit Enter. The second curve is the black curve, y equals 2,000. Enter. I'm going to make a guess. Enter. And there it is, the intersection, y equals 2,000, when x equals 10.14 days. So it'll take just a little bit more than 10 days for the college campus to be closed down when 40% of the students get that virus. And finally, a logarithmic model. On the Richter scale, the magnitude r of an earthquake of a given intensity is given by this logarithmic model. r equals log base 10, or common log, of i over i sub o, where i sub 0 equals 1 is the minimum intensity for an earthquake. So let's take a look at a couple of earthquakes. In South Carolina, there was an earthquake that measured 4.1 on the Richter scale, and in Nago, Japan, they experienced one that measured 6.5 on the Richter scale. So let's find the intensity of each earthquake. So because I sub 0 equals 1 and R equals 4.1, the intensity of the South Carolina earthquake can just be shown by substituting 4.1 in for r and log base 10 of 1 i over 1. Solving for i, what we can do here, they say exponentiate each side, but really this is in logarithmic form and we can change it to exponential form and we can see here that 10 to the 4.1 is equal to i. Log base answer equals exponent, so the exponent on 10 equals our intensity, and there is our solution. So 10 to the 4.1, put that into your calculator, and we get approximately 12,589. Then for the Japanese earthquake, we do the same process with 6.5 in. And again, we end up with logarithmic form, so we can convert that to exponential form, and we get 10 to the 6.5 equals i. And that 
works out to 3.1 million. So we've only increased our intensity of our earthquake 2.4 units, right? We've gone from 4.1 to 6.5. So that's only 2.4 units on the Richter scale. But that's a huge increase in the magnitude of the earthquake. It's about 251 times as powerful. So there are some samples on some real life applications of exponential and logarithmic models. In this one, the Gaussian model, a logistic growth model, and a logarithmic model. And we'll get some more practice with this when I see you in class.